thank you very much for allowing testimony today. Uh, I have a lot of notes prepared, but let's just start with correcting a couple of the things that have been sent here today. Senator Colbeck, there are 13 United States states that have CBD-only medical marijuana laws. So that's a, an established policy that's gone through the United States in several places, so that's well-researchable. Uh, second of all, the gentleman that spoke prior to me, or several people prior to me, mentioned something about intelligence being impaired by medical marijuana. Uh, the fact is, even the scientists in the New Zealand study that cited that have said it's incorrectly being used by the prohibitionist agencies in order to incorrectly reflect the results of their scientific study. So please don't pay that any mind at all. I would also like to say, uh, we had a statement from MRC just a moment ago about how there could be hundreds of growers licensed under the state. Well, that's fine. There are 83 counties in the state. If there are 200 licensed growers, that's only 2.5 licensed growers per county. I don't think that reaches the level of saturation. When someone expresses the 22 facilities, as is expressed in Illinois' law, is too many, that seems they are out of alignment with the common man, with society logical thinking, and that approaches an embrace of monopoly, which is in opposition to Governor Snyder's plan to support small businesses as the backbone of success for Michigan's future. The current state of the bills, the language the sponsors have managed to create, creates far more categories of criminal behavior for medical marijuana patients than it creates protections and rights. In fact, remember that medical marijuana patients pay the state for the privilege to participate in the program and yet you're creating vast degrees of criminality for people that pay for an opportunity to participate. In nearly every other state, there is the war on marijuana is in the decline. This bill is a step backwards when society is demanding that we move forward. A lot of the provisions contained in 4209 and 4210 are so technical in their very nature. For example, the labeling that you mentioned, so easy to make a mistake on, that falling into non-compliance will be easy and unintentional. But the consequences you've outlined for those technical violations are severe. They're harsh. They're out of alignment with the original intention of this bill, which I was a part of in 2011. All the evidence points to Michigan citizenry, citizenry wanting to liberalize marijuana laws, not imposing more penalties. And we know this because the citizens say so with their votes. 25 times in the last 11 years, local elections. In local elections, Michigan voters have said yes to liberalizing medical marijuana laws, including three times in 2015 alone, and including the city in which we are all sitting right now. Lansing passed a local legalization proposal that far outstrips what's being proposed by the medical marijuana law, and it was passed by a good majority as well. It seems as if the limited scope contained within 4209 is not embraced by the majority of our citizens. I have to say, specifically, the bills represent a dramatic variance from the original language and even the language that existed in 2014. I'd also like to correct something, Senator Jones, that you said that's only partially true. When you say that these bills don't eliminate the caregivers from the system, they do eliminate caregivers from participating in the commercial aspects of the system. You cannot be a caregiver and work at a distribution center. You cannot be a caregiver and work at a cultivation center. You cannot be a caregiver and work in a transportation aspect of this. So the people who have spent five, six, seven years developing the skills necessary to make this industry successful are the ones prohibited from participating in it. That's nonsensical. Sir, I want to correct one thing there. It's, you just can't be a licensee. You can work at one of them. You, you, you can't be the licensed owner. Is that in a substitute, by the way, or is that in the original language? That's in a sub. Okay. We can provide it. May I ask, Senator Jones, we have no access to the sub. You've encountered that problem many we'll times. We'll make sure today. you get everything today, everything but, you want. But is it not appropriate for us to have access to the sub prior to us giving testimony so that we it, can avoid it? It was available in paper form if you'd asked. Uh, I was up at the front. There was no subs available at the All front right. desk. Uh, we'll make sure you get it. Yeah, but what about the remainder of the people here, though? Everyone it, should have access to that. Everybody can have it. Uh, I hit something occurred. I did not know it was going to happen an hour before two people tell me they're going to go to a funeral. So I'm not going to be able to take a vote today. You're going to have all the information you want. Well, that's, okay. that's fantastic. Perhaps we could have that available uh, electronically so that people could have that available before they come down prior to the next session as well. I, I'm, I'm sorry to hear about that funeral situation. I apologize for that. If indeed you
you insert a three-tiered distribution program into this medical marijuana proposal in 4209, as has been said that you're going to, there's yet another negative aspect added to the list of problems with this bill. Questions were raised in the House that no one's answered yet. What will be the cost to the end user of the seed to sale program? That was a question asked in the House Judiciary, and it's not yet been answered yet. Where is the demonstrable need for armored cars to haul marijuana from place to place? That's not a program that is seen as successful in other states, and neither has there been any demonstrated need here. When considering amendments to the Michigan Medical Marijuana Act, you should ask yourself, does this amendment benefit patients, or does it simply create new business opportunities? Why ban caregivers from the commercial aspect? It still bothers me. Uh, Senator Bita said earlier today that considerable work remains. Uh, we also heard that you allowed extra time for another bill previously. Uh, I had hoped to appeal to you for extra time, but it seems as if, through an unhappy circumstance, that's going to be available to us. And that will conclude my remarks. All right, thank you. Roger.